Hello, hello, hello. It's Knits for Sanity and welcome to my Whip and Chat. Whip stands for work in progress. So grab whatever craft, hobby, or chore, or maybe exercise it is that you need to work on right now and let me chat with you for a while. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I am so glad that you stopped by. Please consider sub subscribing to my channel. I promise I do often speak more clearly than that. Uh, do consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content. And if you are a returning visitor, thank you so much for coming back. I know it's been a couple of weeks since my last whip and chat. Um, if you have been following along with me for a while, you know that right now this is like the most intense time of year because wrestling season's coming to a conclusion and Odyssey of the Mind is wrapping up and all the activities that my kids are involved in kind of all come to a head during the month of February. So I am really, really sorry that I missed all of you last week. That was not what I wanted. But I am very happy to be back with you this week. All right, so what am I working on? Well, my painting is from Carrot Art. It is by, um, 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 oh, good grief. It is by oh, Digimom. That's who it's by. It's by Digimom from Carrot Art. And I am working on this for hashtag DP for Black History Month. And if you are interested in participating in this event, there is still time. It does end the end of this month. But if you are a super speedy diamond painter, you could still get involved. So I will link all of that information below and you can go and check that out. That's being hosted by Sam over at Blunts and Gems. In addition to that, today uh, the cover minder that I am using is so cute. This is a special cover minder made exclusively for the event by Moni Paints with Diamonds. And I just got this in the mail and did an unboxing just the other day. So if you want to go back and see the other items that I got with this cover minder, please do. Um, super cute. This is so cute. She's adorable. I think this one is Alicia or Alicia. Um, depends again on where you live and how you pronounce the name. Uh just look, I mean, look at, look at that. So anyway, that is my cover minder today. I am in love with this tray from Muni Made. Absolutely in love with it. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my other trays as well, but this one has been a pleasure to work with. I also like the stopper a lot too. Um, I just, I like how substantial it is. And I honestly thought that I wouldn't. So this has been a very pleasant surprise. My pen, I actually unboxed with my last whip and chat. This is Jim's Handmade Pens. And this was my like exper experimental purchase. I wanted a pen that was smaller, easier for me to flip around. And I have loved using this. Absolutely loved it. Um, I was kind of worried that this would maybe be too short for me, but it really isn't. I could go probably about half an inch longer and it would still be perfect. Um, so I will also link Jim's Handmade Pens, the Etsy shop, in my notes below, as well as Muni Made and of course Muni Paints with Diamonds. All of this information will be in my notes below, so definitely go and check that out. In the meantime, if you haven't already, please like my video. Uh, it may not seem like a big deal to you, but it is a big deal for me and all small YouTube content creators. It is very, very much appreciated. All right, so let's get started. This painting is number two that I've been working on from Carrot Art. My first one that I now have put away because I am doing this painting for Carrot Art is very different from this one. And it's, you know, it's really because of difference in artists. Um, but the other painting that I'm doing is so confetti heavy, like crazy confetti heavy. This painting has been a lot of color blocking, a lot of color blocking. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and I don't want to say too much because I like to save that for my post review and I'm, you know, really 
what, maybe a fifth of the way done with this painting. So I don't want to say too much more about it, except that the very obvious, this has a ton of color blocking versus the other one that I've been working on is total confetti. <laughs> so two very different ends of the diamond painting spectrum from Carrot Art. So just something to kind of keep in mind if you do shop from them. And uh, I should mention too, I do have a 10% off code with Carrot Art. I am not an affiliate. I do not get a commission, um, but it is a unique code that you can use if you'd like to get 10% off from your order with Carrot Art. Um, that's just something that I wanted to be able to offer you guys because it is an international business and so shipping is rather expensive. All right, let's get started. And now I have to try and catch you up on two weeks worth of activities. And I, I'm not even sure like where to begin. Um, I guess maybe the best way to do it then is we'll start with like child number one and work my way down. That seems to be the most logical. First, I would like to mention that my husband stopped and got me some wonderful um, fresh coffee. I mean, we don't live near a coffee place. So the fact that he had to go into a town somewhere for something and then he did get me this coffee and then he brought it home. He still did have to heat it up. Um, <laughs> but it's still, it's like a super special treat because we don't live near a coffee place. So, you know, shout out to him for doing that for me. That was super duper kind. Um, all right. So, yes, daughter number one. And if you are brand new, daughter number one is 14 years old. She is in the eighth grade here in the United States. Her interests include art and anime and more art. <laughs> uh she is my most private child. She typically does not like it when I share information about her, when I share pictures of her or um, things like that. However, super exciting news. This past week, she did actually send me a couple pictures of some of her hand-drawn artwork that she told me I could share. So I have shared one of those things on Instagram already, which you can follow me there as well. It's the same name, Knits for Sanity. And there is another picture that I will eventually share on Instagram as well from her. And what just blows my mind with these images is these aren't even like finished products. These are just things that she has in her sketchbooks. That's it. These are just things that she has sketched out. You know, they're not meant to be final drafts of anything. They're just sketches. And they are so good. She is very self-conscious and she really doesn't need to be. You know, I get it. It's that age. I was the exact same way. And, you know, I'm sure you remember too that kind of persistent, constant fear that what you create isn't enough, that fear of rejection, um, that's very real for her and more so with her than with her two sisters right underneath her. So it was so exciting for me that she was willing to share some of her art, not just with me, which she also hardly ever does, but also with all of you. So I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of all of my kids, but my oldest in many ways just really, she's something special. She's had a host of struggles, including major surgeries and um, some other, I mean, just very major issues. And she continues to absolutely amaze me. She pushes forward. She overcomes. And I would say that this year in school, she's having her best year Ever, and I hope that it continues. She's kind of been going through some rough times lately, but I am more apt to blame um, seasonal affective disorder <laughs> living in West Michigan where it is cloudy all the time during the winter. I mean, all the time. Um, I don't remember some of the most recent statistics that I read 
but it's it's pretty atrocious um like more than what you can possibly comprehend unless you already live here or somewhere just as horrifically cloudy <laughs> as it is here um yesterday however no not yesterday two days ago we had sun we did not have sun yesterday yesterday it was holy wind batman whoo we um like super crazy wind in fact you know what i have a picture that i took of myself yesterday I'll put that up here so that you can see it was, yeah, Holy Wind Batman. And that is even, we live in the woods. And so this was even me kind of a little bit protected with all these trees around me. And it's still that windy. Oh, all right. So really, I guess that's probably all that I have to say about child number one. Um, any more than that. And, you know, she would not be happy. Just know that she's a super duper cool kid or becoming young woman. And I am very pleased with her. And if you want to see any of her artwork, I do have that latest image of her sketch up on Instagram. And there are a few other things that are posted there as well. You have to dig a little bit to get to them, though. All right. So daughter number two, who is, she actually likes it <laughs> when I share about her, uh, which is interesting to me. Um, but it makes sense because being a neurodivergent, um, she spends, I mean, everyone in my family is, but she, um, especially so, she spends so much of her life feeling like she is not understood and not always sure how to communicate. Um, however, she is an exceptional writer. She does a phenomenal job communicating through writing, which she is probably the most like me personality wise out of all of my kids because I was the exact same way. Very socially awkward when I was her age. I am still very socially awkward. I still don't understand all of these bizarre social rules. Um, but you know, you, you do start to adapt as you get older and she's just not really there yet. <laughs> she's working on it, you know? She's, she is, she's working on it and stuff. Um, at the same time, she is also just the neatest kid. And so she likes it when I share things about her because I think for her, it feels like people can actually get to know her and understand her when she is left unable to communicate for herself, which is something that does happen with her pretty regularly. When she gets overwhelmed, she kind of shuts down. Like that whole connection between her brain and her mouth, just it, I don't know how to describe it. it it's like it literally does not work. It does not function. And she cannot talk. So she likes when I share stories and stuff. And she also is really great when I had her on a whip and chat. Um, she does really well sharing then. It's, you know, the presence of people and stuff that can be very hard for her. And, and I get it, you know, even now I struggle to know what to say when in person with somebody. And, you know, you always have that later that night when I'm in bed, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I said that. I sounded like an absolute idiot. Um, really what I meant to say was all of these things, which make a lot of sense or are really good arguments, but I can't do it at that time. And part of that's because like, I don't know when it's appropriate for me to enter into a conversation by the time I figure out that, oh, I could say something now, someone else is already talking and then the subject changes and I don't know how to change the subject back to what it was previously. It's very complicated guys. I mean, <laughs> it is. And unless, unless you know what I'm talking about, you don't realize how complicated different social dynamics are. <laughs> So anyway, that was kind of a lengthy little ramble there about daughter number two and social interactions. Uh, but wrestling is her thing. Whew, the child absolutely adores this sport, even though she herself does not wrestle anymore. And she was always very, very miserable at it. She is a truly horrendous wrestler. And... <laughs> 
I say that with absolute love and affection. That is because she does have quite severe dyspraxia and, um, you know, her mind-body connection in general is very poor. And her ability for, um, 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 what am I looking for? Like muscle memory, much lower than the average person. And so she, when she was really, really little, she would like, she'd look longingly at the slide on the playground, but because she didn't know how to manipulate the movement of her legs and her feet to climb up the stairs for the slide, she would never use it. And it took me a little while to figure out what was going on. You know, it's like, is she just not at all interested in doing all of these other things that normal toddler, young preschoolers do? Or is there something more going on? And so watching her, it's like, oh, I think she doesn't know how. So, you know, I got her, we put her in therapy and stuff right away and she did receive a lot of help. And that is actually why she started wrestling in the first place. And wrestling was huge for her and it did help immensely. So much so that she is even capable of jumping rope now, which is something that we were told, I was told way back when, that that kind of a coordinated muscle activity she might never be able to do. So that's why I say, yes, she was an absolutely horrible wrestler, but I say that with absolute love and affection. And there was no chance of her ever being a really good wrestler. So when it got to the point when she really couldn't be of any benefit to any other wrestler in her wrestling club anymore, you know, because you need, you need decent wrestling partners of about your same weight to practice with. And when it reached the point when Veda realized that she really couldn't even be a good partner for anyone anymore, she decided she wanted to be done wrestling herself. And I totally get that. Totally get that. And especially, you know, kids can be pretty cruel sometimes. And some of the kids were pretty mean. Um, and, you know, and they don't get it. They just, you know, that they just think that Veda is just, I don't know, lazy or like really untalented, um, which she is definitely not lazy. Um, untalented, perhaps, but, you know, not understanding that there's a whole neurodevelopmental thing that is going into this. Kids don't get that, you know. But she has continued to absolutely love this sport. So she has been a junior coach slash manager for the high school team. She is finishing up her third season now. And last week, the team had districts in the state of Michigan, the way that it works. And um, for the couple of you who have like, can you talk more about wrestling? I promise I will talk more about the actual sport post-season when I can go into a little bit more details about the sport itself. For those of you who have zero interest in wrestling, I do apologize and my constant talk about it will almost be done in really just a few weeks, pretty much. It will no longer be a topic in every single whip and chat. In the meantime, however, just try and take joy in the fact that a super awkward, barely 13-year-old girl <laughs> adores this sport. Um, but anyway, in Michigan, the way that it works is first you have districts, and districts is usually between four schools. Then the winner from the district event goes on to regionals, and regionals consists of four schools. Michigan is also divided into four divisions. So while regionals are going on, and it's four schools per region, which there are a total of eight regions, um, that's actually eight regions times four divisions. So it's actually 32 total regions, but divisions are separated. So like for us, we are division three out of four, and... Um, that's because we are a small-ish school, um, but, you know, with a school district of about 200 square miles, um, that gives you enough students to be a Division three school. 
uh, which is, there's one, which is the super mega huge schools. There's two, which is the size school that like I went to. Um, and then there is three and then four are your smallest. So um, that's kind of how it works. And then the top eight schools from each division, they end up going to team state to compete at the state level. And then, of course, from there, you end up getting your winner and blah, blah, blah. Um, so districts is where we started last week. And I thought that we had the same four schools in our district that we have had every year, with the exception of two years ago, which was, you know, that was the whole 2020, 2021 year, which is really, really weird. Um, super late start to the season. It was a shortened season. Districts were all different and funky because some schools didn't have wrestling programs that year. Um, you know, it was just crazy. So other than two years ago, we have had these same four schools in our district for quite some time. Well, I was really surprised when I got there and one of those schools wasn't there. Now, all of these three other schools, we have already beat earlier in the season. We have competed with all of them at least one time. And we did beat all three of these schools. Uh, with one of those three being a concern, if you will, um, you know, like we barely beat them when we saw them last month or whatever. So that was my one, that was the one school where it's like, well, you know, this could still go either way. They might end up winning again this year. But that school wasn't there. And like, what the heck? What happened to this school? And, you know, the kids are telling me, oh, they, you know, they weren't ever supposed to be here. I'm like, what? Knowing that's not true. I know I looked up the um, divisions earlier this season and they were still listed. Well, something did change over the course of the season because when I looked then that night, like what, then what, you know, what district are they in? Sure enough, they were in a different district. So we only actually had three schools for districts this year. And the other two schools were, I hate to say it, but they were very easy wins. They did not have all weight classes and they did not have all weight classes. I mean, one school by a lot, like six voids I think or more I can't even remember now actually you know what I think the second school was six voids and the first school was probably seven or eight voids I mean it was a lot there's 14 weight classes and so when I say a void that means that like let's say 106, which is the lowest weight class currently in Michigan. And our weight classes just got changed this year. Last year it was 103, but this year it's 106 as the lowest weight class. And so let's say we have a 106, but the other team doesn't. That means that they have a void. And so we take a void and we get the full six points. So the fact that these other schools had so many voids, we were pretty much guaranteed a win <laughs> and then what was interesting is the team that actually had more voids who we went up against first they did better than the second team who had fewer voids the first team we won I mean by a lot I don't remember but at least they had points on the board the second team it was a shutout and I always feel awful when that happens absolutely awful for the other team and you know because you want them to score something you know but they got nothing and we had all voids and all pins with the exception of one bout and that was it one bout only came in with your uh like standard score if you will where you just win by decision where you win by one to seven points so then you get just three points for the team so it, we, oh, yeah, I felt bad. So we won districts, but it's the first time we've won districts since 2017. My daughter was so excited. And then what was so awesome is she got a medal too. And for her, this really felt like this is the first medal she earned as a coach, which was huge. She was tickled pink. 
I did put up a picture of her last week um, saying, hey, you know what? I'm so sorry. I won't be doing a whip and chat. But in case you're wondering, we did win districts. And so I put up a picture of my daughter there. And oh, sure. I'll just add it here as well for you. <laughs> she was so proud and so proud of the team. Um, so then that meant that we got to advance to regionals. Well, regionals, uh, in regionals, typically I feel like around here, especially you're rarely going to run into an upset, you know, districts, you often have a little bit more of a chance to have some kind of an upset, you know, teams will change year to year quite often, but by the time you get to regionals, I feel like it's kind of set. Like, you know who's going to advance. And we did. There is a school in our region that, just historically, they are very strong in their wrestling department. And even though they, like us, had a lot of brand new wrestlers this year, there's just something about the emphasis that the school puts on wrestling. There's something about the coaching or the commitment that they make these kids take that even though the team was also full of relatively new kids, they still are awesome. So we actually had wrestled this school a few weeks ago and we wound up with only 12 points. Now, when you realize that there's 14 weight classes and every win gets you somewhere between three and six points. You can get three, four, five, or six points. And to hear that we only got 12 points, um, that should kind of give you an idea of how poorly it went. And I believe we had our 12 points. It was one pin and then two wins by decision. So we only won three out of 14 bouts the first time. So <laughs> we did not, however, wrestle that team first last night. And I wasn't sure how it was going to go against the first team because the first team also is full of brand new wrestlers, um, younger team, just like ours. For whatever reason, that seems to be the trend this year. A lot of schools, a lot of schools have lost a lot of really awesome wrestlers in the last two years. And so now it's like you're, you're building up your team all over again. And I'm not sure why that is this year, but I've found that in sports in general, that it's like there are these cycles. Um, and having, you know, taught and been in education, it's like every class kind of has their own like vibe, like, you know, this class is very academic. This class is very athletic. This class is a bunch of hellions. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's kind of odd, you know, and I have theories about some things um, that I won't go into now because it'll just bore you and they're just my crazy theories. But anyway, so I wasn't sure how the first duel was going to go. But it went phenomenally well. It went even better than I thought. Like I had studied the brackets ahead of time and, you know, I looked into the kids' records and stuff. And the way that I saw it is there were five bouts that the other team was guaranteed. And there were six-ish bouts, six or seven, that we were probably guaranteed. And that included two voids. So that left two or three bouts that were what I thought real up in the air, could go either way. Well, we did even better than what I thought. We won more than just the six or seven. Um, I'm trying to remember. So that team, they wound up with 15 points at the end. And I know there was for sure one pin and one major. So that was 10 points right there. And then, oh, a tech fall. They only had three wins. That's what it was. Tech fall, real quick. What is a tech fall? That is when you score 15 points on your opponent. Then they call the match done and over, and you get what's called a technical fall worth five points. What is a major? That is when you score between eight to 14 points more than your opponent. That's considered a major win. You get four points. A pin gets you six. And then, of course, your regular win by decision is three. There you go. So that's the brief of that. So the team did really, really well, which was, I was pleasantly surprised. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting them to do that well. 
So that meant we did get to go up against this insanely good school. Well, this school is so insanely good that our best wrestler and our only senior competing this year, he had had a little bit of an injury the day before in practice. And we did have him wrestle the first duel because we really needed him to. You know, you know, when he went up to wrestle, we didn't know yet for sure what the outcome was going to be. And so we needed him to wrestle. But this other team is so good. We knew that there was no way we were going to win. It was not even a possibility. And so we, he sat out. He didn't even wrestle. It just, it was not worth it to risk him further injuring himself when he still has individuals coming up, which I'll get to that in a second too. So it was, it was a bloodbath. Um, now the good news is we still did end with 12 points, just like the first time we wrestled them. And if we had put in our best wrestler, we would have ended with 15 points. So we would have actually increased our score slightly. And how do I know that, that it would have been 15 <laughs> total? It's because of this other thing called individual districts versus team districts. So because wrestling is really an individual sport, first and foremost, there are two branches, if you will. There are, there's the team with the 14 weight classes. And, you know, you, you earn team points based on how each individual wrestler does. And then there are individuals where you go for just your weight class and try and, you know, win. And so then, again, in the state of Michigan, there are uh, 16 schools. Like, your team region <laughs> is the same as your team as your individual district. So those schools are the same. So Saturday, all of the schools that were at our team region yesterday were at the individual districts last Saturday. That I don't know if that makes sense. I'm sorry. Um so our best wrestler, Ian, and I may use his name, um Ian wrestled this other kid and he had wrestled him um, last month as well, when we wrestled against the school and only got 12 points. And Ian both times came in with a very solid win by decision. <laughs> um, and I didn't see any difference, any change in that happening, just based on how they both wrestle. It would have probably been a very solid win by decision again. So the team did great. It is the best run that they've had toward state team finals in years. And who knows, with all of these new kids on the team, who knows what could happen in a couple of years. If they stick around, if they work hard, if they stay academically eligible, we could end up having a really awesome team. There was a time 25 years ago or whatever, when a lot of these kids' parents were in high school the team was second in state for our division. They were considered one of the best schools in the state, you know, and maybe it'll happen again. Time will tell. So yeah, so that's kind of the update there. And then what we have left with wrestling is Saturday is individual regionals. And we did have six kids we had one first place finisher, three second place finishers, and two fourth place finishers. You take the top four kids from every district and they move on to regionals. So we have that this coming Saturday. And then each region, for there are four total regions in the state. Um, they take their top four kids from the region and they are now state qualifiers. And they will go on to individual state, which takes place the first weekend of March, Friday, Saturday, the first weekend of March. And Veda and I will be attending. We, you know, barring injury, Ian for sure should be going to state. He went last year. He placed seventh. Um, and so he is hoping, of course, to improve on that. And at state, when you finish in the top eight, you are considered all state. So that's kind of how that works. Um, um, 
Yeah, and so that will be in just a couple of weeks. Beta and I will do that. In addition to doing that, we also are going to the Big Ten Championship, which blows my mind. First, that I'm into wrestling as an adult. Second, that I am so much into a sport that, yes, going to a Big Ten Championship event is like something I am really looking forward to doing. <laughs> Uh, so that should be fun. The seats that I got us are not amazing, but Veda won't really care. She'll just be happy to be able to go and to watch it in person. And I will be too. I think we will still have a really, really wonderful time. Our biggest debate is the Big Ten happens Saturday, Sunday of that same weekend that individual state happens, which is Friday, Saturday. So depending on how Ian does... Our game plan right now is um, if Ian does not, if Ian is not going to the semifinal, so if he is not going to be wrestling for first, but instead he'll be wrestling for third, fifth, or seventh, um, we will go back to the individual state tournament Saturday morning because in the morning you wrestle for places third through eighth. If, however, he does make it to the semifinal, as heartbreaking as it's going to be, we are not going to watch him at all. And instead, we are just going to go to the Big Ten Championship. Versus if he has to wrestle in the morning, we will stay for that session. And then we'll just make it to session two, three, and four of the Big Ten starting Saturday, late afternoon, evening, or whatever. So that's kind of our game plan there. Uh... I think I'm done with the wrestling bit now. I'm done. All right. So daughter number three. And really that is pretty much all that's going on in daughter number two's life right now is wrestling. So daughter number three. <sighs> Had to drink my coffee. Um, she just finished up her season of Odyssey of the Mind. Which if you're not familiar with it, I would look it up. It's a really cool. It's a really cool academic program. Um, competitive program where kids have to solve two different problems. One is called the long-term problem where they need to include all kinds of different elements within a play of sorts. Um, and it's an eight minute performance, absolutely no longer than that. And then also what's called a spontaneous problem. So a shorter, is it four minutes or five? I think it's five minutes. A shorter problem that's presented to the group in private the day of the event that they have to try and work through as a group. Well, this year for Odyssey of the Mind, and both of my middle two have done OM for a number of years, but Veda has, of course, selected wrestling <laughs> and put that ahead of OM, which is fine. I find it funny. Husband and I thought that as she got older, certainly she would choose Odyssey of the Mind. No, no, she chose wrestling. And that's fine. This is where she seems to be happy. This is what she, you know, she has big plans. She wants to continue in the sport in some form, even though she's not wrestling herself. Um, so daughter number two has been in OM for a number of years now. And actually one year I coached her team, which is about all that I could handle personally. It's just I love kids, but especially they were third grade children and it was, it was hard for me. <laughs> it was really hard. Um, and that was the second year she did OM. So thinking about that, this would have been her fifth year doing OM because she's in sixth grade now and Beta is seventh grade, just turned 13 and my youngest is 11. Uh... This was a hard year. They had several new kids on the team. And it just was a hard year. A very hard year. My daughter, toward the end of the season, she is normally my happy-go-lucky, outgoing child. And yet, toward the end of the season, she was noticeably stressed out um, to the point that I, I was really getting kind of concerned about her. So, 
you know, we did a lot of talking. Um, tried to help her work through some different things. And in the end, she decided that really she was ready for the season to be done. Um, the way that it works in Odyssey of the Mind is it's just regionals and then you have state and then you have your international competition. So <laughs> Odyssey of the Mind, it's like it amps up a lot more quickly. Um, and that's because it ends at an international level. Um, last year, the team did advance to state. Two years ago, both of my daughters were in a team together and they were actually first place in the state and could have advanced to nationals, but they were not allowed to per our district's policies regarding COVID at the time. And that, I mean, that was okay. Really, the kids were all kind of sick of it anyway by that point and didn't really want to move on. <laughs> they were still all elementary school then, and it's hard. So this year, Evie really felt like, you know, I will be totally okay if we can't advance to state. And they didn't. They did not, however, come in last, so that was good. But more importantly than that, when I talked with Evie about it later, she actually felt really good about what they had done Saturday. And if you're listening, yeah, Saturday I was with Veda at Individual Districts for Wrestling and my husband was with Evie at Odyssey of the Mind Regionals <laughs> and my other two stayed home. And every year that happens, every year. And that's why Veda can't do OM anymore is because OM competition always falls on a major wrestling competition day. So Evie felt good though about what they had done and that is what I wanted for her. That is what I was hoping for her. That is what we had talked about and we're really wanting for the day. She left feeling like they did the best that they could that day. She left feeling like they actually kind of pulled it off and maybe even did better than what she expected. Um, they did not come in last, which is always kind of a relief. Uh, last year at State, they came in dead last. And that's kind of hard when that happens. Even though they did still advance to State, it's still kind of a like, oh, we're, but we were last. And someone has to be last, you know? And that's, that's what you say to the kids too. Someone has to be last. This just means now you know how to grow and improve for in the future. Um, I don't know, you know, they're talking about doing OM again next year and we'll see what happens. I also know that Evie really wants to play volleyball for the school next year, which she can start doing in seventh grade. And so I know that will conflict a little bit, but volleyball is a fall sport for girls. So she could very feasibly do both without having it interfere too much. And that was the other thing too, is a couple of the boys on the OM team were wrestlers, which of course, you know, I'm total support of that. But then that meant that they had to miss a lot of the group practices and stuff. And that's difficult too. Um... It was middle school wrestling, so they did not have a competition the day of the Odyssey of the Mind competition. But both of these boys, you know, if they want to stick with wrestling, which uh, for sure one of them I do see doing that, uh, Odyssey of the Mind will just not be an option anymore. And that's okay. I mean, you have to pick and choose as you get older. That's just kind of what happens. But I think, I think if it is an option, I think she will still do Odyssey of the Mind again next year, which I would love to see for her. And I am tickled pink with how she held herself together this season and that she is very happy with their end result. Okay, so finally, it's really all with daughter number three. Uh, she's also my little math genius, <laughs> which has been an issue lately. The last math test that the kids took, daughter number three did quite well. And daughter number one, who's in the same class, she struggled a little bit. But, you know, it's another issue. We're working through it. So, my son. So then at the end of this, after having these three girls in three years, I have this little boy. He's seven years old. He's first grade. And, you know, really, his life has been pretty hunky-dory lately, I think. He did have one bit of a crisis last week, 
and that was Friday ended up being a snow day, which daughter number two gives herself the credit for because she wrote this persuasive letter to admin on Tuesday requesting for a snow day on Wednesday. And when that did not happen, she sent a PowerPoint presentation to admin Thursday night requesting a snow day for Friday. And lo and behold, they had a snow day last Friday. <laughs> um, my son was really emotional on Friday, like uncharacteristically so, just very emotional. And then he had a huge meltdown at lunchtime, just a huge meltdown. So I talked to him. I'm like, you know, buddy, what is going on? What is what's bothering you? And that is when I found out that he was very, very sad because his class or he was supposed to be getting pizza with ranch dressing for lunch. And you have to remember when you are seven years old. And in the first grade, something like pizza, Friday, lunch, pizza can be what you are looking forward to all week. I mean, that can be the highlight of your week. And when that is taken away, you're devastated. So he was devastated that he was not going to get his school pizza with ranch dressing. Well, there are times when, you know, you do the tough parenting thing and you're like, look, I know I'm sorry it stinks, but things change, plans get altered. I'm really sorry. You'll have pizza again at school in a couple of weeks. But this didn't seem like one of those times based on how emotional he was and everything. It's like, no, this seemed like one of those times where we actually try and fix it, rectify it. So when I asked him about ordering pizza for dinner that night, his face lit right up and then he was he just wanted his pizza. <laughs> so we ended up having pizza and I um, actually drove down to a Little Caesars to get him his pizza because he likes Little Caesars pizza. And we have a couple of Little Caesars like 20, 25 miles away from here, which isn't too bad. So I drove down to a Little Caesars to get pizza and I even got him his own little ranch dressing packet. <laughs> So when I came back with that and like, look, buddy, and I even got you some ranch dressing, your own little ranch dressing. He was so happy. Totally worth it. In the world of Havelock-isms, or funny things that my son says, <laughs> yesterday when it was so windy, apparently uh, he came home and informed dad that... It was so windy that the mustache hairs blew right off his face. So there you have it. And if you know about my son and his ongoing issues with having like facial hair, <laughs> you'll know just how funny that statement is. But yes, he was convinced that it was so windy yesterday that his mustache hairs blew right off his face. So then I asked my husband, uh, well, if he said that to you, then why do you still have your hairs on your face? <laughs> and I'm dying to know how he would reply to that. <laughs> like, huh, why does daddy still have all of his mustache hairs? I don't know. Um, He's just, uh, he's funny. He's just a funny kid. And I give him a lot of credit for putting up with these three older hormonal sisters. And oh, they are hormonal. Oh, oh, oh. I have three of them. Oh, pray for me. The next several years are going to continue to be rough. Um, but otherwise, you know, in Havelock's world, life's been pretty good lately. He had Valentine's Day at school, and he's my only one that still does, you know, fun stuff for Valentine's. So he had Valentine's, and he wrote his name on all of them, and then they all came with, like, an eraser that he could attach. And then I also found, for super cheap, a box of um those poppets but they were all like little keychains with like a three by three grid of poppets on it and it was really inexpensive and much like at Christmas a lot of kids in our area they just they don't have a whole lot and I mean not that we have a lot either but if I can do something that is going to bring some of these kids a little bit of extra happiness when they come from a home that happiness 
sometimes isn't easily found, I'm going to do it. And so he got to attach all these poppets to his gift as well. And some of the other gifts um, or Valentines that he came home with were pretty impressive. There was one girl and they had built like Valentine robots using like a juice box as the body. And then there was a plastic container of fruit that was the head. And I think nerds were the legs smarties were maybe the arms I don't I mean it was really cute some people are so stinking creative I'm not that creative you know it's <laughs> I am so not that creative uh but that's really the only valentine stuff that we had going on around here my oldest her best friend did buy her a carnation because that's something that they do at the middle school um you can buy a flower for somebody and then you get it like in your last hour of the day it's dropped off for you it's it's a pto fundraiser thing and so my oldest did end up getting a flower from her bestie and so that was kind of cool she liked that a lot but otherwise nothing else i mean my girls are not into relationships i really hate how these drills are arranging on my canvas like, I am really bothered by it. Sorry, that's kind of off subject, obviously, except that I am diamond painting. And yeah, I'm kind of really bothered by how these are lining up. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep... Part of it is because it is color blocking. And so any alignment issues are just so obvious when it's color blocking. Which I think might be part of the reason why I really don't like color blocking. That and it's boring. Um, but yeah, I mean, my girls are not at all interested in like boyfriend, girlfriend type stuff. And that's cool with me. I am in no hurry for any of that at all, especially it's just so not needed in, in middle school. So yeah, I mean, it was a pretty low key day other than my son coming back with his big old bag of candy and Valentine's. All right, guys, I really think that gets you pretty much up to date um again it was a lot about wrestling today i feel like today's whipping chat was kind of mellow maybe that's because i'm feeling kind of mellow i'm tired it's been a long few weeks but hopefully it wasn't too terribly boring for all of you and if it was my most sincere apologies and next week hopefully it'll be a little more upbeat i don't know i mean it's not that this was like i wasn't i don't think depressing although maybe i was I don't know. If I was depressing, I hope I wasn't too depressing. I don't want you to leave depressed. You should be happy. Please be happy. Uh, anyway, having said all of that, I am going to leave you with this little tidbit that it is snowing outside again after yesterday's wind and has come the snow. Um, I forgot to do a community question. So if you happen to still be listening, if you would please just drop an emoji, any old emoji in the comments below, I would appreciate it because I'm kind of curious to see which emoji are you going to pick? Like pick out one of your most favorite emojis and put that in the comments and um, then I'll know that you were here. All right, guys. So that really does wrap everything up. Again, please check out my notes below um, for all of this cool stuff that I'm using and the different companies that have offered them, especially my small businesses that I have represented here. And like I always say, let me put down my drill pen here. This is the serious part of the whip and chat. But like I always say, please practice kindness. You never know what someone is going through. It could be a mother who has just been through a really intense long season of wrestling and she might be feeling really tired and stressed out and just emotionally exhausted and perhaps has gone through like people overload and just desperately needs some time alone. And so maybe that's why she's snippy or acting kind of cold in front of you in line at, at you know, the hardware store or the grocery store or at the library. Uh, I may or may not be talking about myself. I, you know, you be the judge. But anyway, <laughs> you don't know what someone's going through is the bottom line. So please just try to be kind. Just practice kindness. And I hope that you are having a wonderful day. I hope that you are shown this same level of kindness. And I will see you again real soon.